If today you are seen, then it's another. That's why I feel like no other. Hey, this is David the Shepherd School, and we're going to do part two of our Weed Eater Steam Engine build. Uh, this is actually the second take when I was, uh, it, the engine worked, uh, worked pretty good the first time, but when I went to edit the video, it, um, the uh, flash drive had messed up, and I lost everything, so I have to uh, restart. Uh, but I took what I learned from the first time, hopefully the second time it'll run even better. So what I did is I went and I got on for Craigslist a $20 pressure canner and then the little jiggler at the end, the little weight, I had screwed that off and then put in a, a brass fitting to a piece of rigid copper pipe and uh, I put a link to, uh, I've got some industry uh, manuals, some, some specs for pressure and I'm, and I'm thinking that this is uh, going to be a couple thousand pounds stronger the bursting pressure than what I need and so uh, that's pretty good so I ran it from the piece of rigid copper pipe to a, a ball valve to an airline and then to my steam engine and you can't tell I'll zoom in a little bit but I took the oiler off because it was leaking and so it took a lot higher temperatures to get the needed pressures because half of my steam was coming out around my oiler. Now I'm using wet steam. Wet steam as opposed to dry steam talks about how much energy potential is in the steam uh, due to heat. Wet steam is basically hot enough to boil but as soon as it cools off it converts back to water. With dry steam it's superheated and it's, it's above the critical temperature that it needs to make steam. Now uh, that's more dangerous but it's also more efficient. It's also more corrosive, which is why I put the oiler in there. Since this is just getting up the temperature uh, in the pressure cooker, as it comes out, it's going to condense, and you'll see water come out on my uh, on my stove. So I'm going to have to do a lot of cleanup when I'm done. And what that does is it it, it makes me have to get everything up to temperature before the thing runs. So all this is going to be pretty hot. And uh, so I've got some water in here. I've got it about a uh, third of the way full. And when I run it, I run it for quite a while the first time. and only lost about half an inch of water. So um, if you fill this thing halfway full of water, it'll run for a long time. So right now I've got it on high. It's just building up pressure. you got the valve. It's going to come down. All this is going to heat up. And then we'll turn it on. Now, as you look at this thing, I know it looks a lot like a steel especially when I don't have the plastic pulled away from the metal. Um, it didn't melt before, but I still want to be careful. But this is copper, or this is uh, aluminum, and this is plastic. The aluminum would react, if I wanted to use it for a whiskey still, it would react with alcohols and, and give you some off taste and a lot of corrosion. And this isn't uh, uh, solvent friendly, so the alcohol would eat away the plastic and, you know, besides poisoning myself, it'd probably leak a lot. So um, this might be suitable to distill or, or to steam distill essential oils, but that's way out of my ballpark. I've not even begun to research that. So uh, this is not a whiskey still, even though a lot of the principles are the same. So we're going to build it up to temperature and we'll come back and I'll show you how this thing's running. And you know when we're done, you're cleaning all this up. Yeah, shut up. Okay, so here we go. Got it up steam. Got it up to the right pressure. It's not leaking. There we go. 
So, here we are, running off of steam, zoom in. All right, there we go. Now, um, as it comes down, it condenses, and the water turns, it, comes from water vapor back to water and so it's coming out the exhaust all of this is extremely hot because it won't get up pressure until all this is hot just this bell housing and the flywheel are the only things that uh, are, are cool enough to touch now I still need to make to cast a flywheel and I need to come up with some sort of mounting system and I want to come back after I cast a flywheel thinking about casting one that I can insert magnets to and make a permanent magnet generator or uh, you know cast a flywheel that's a that's a pulley I, I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that yet but I've turned the heat off turn the valve back on there we go. I also need to uh, I also need to make some sort of pull cord because Getting here with my fingers and, and jerking that thing, one of these days that's going to pull my hand off. So, alright. Just because I like doing it, I'm going to do it one more time, and then I'm going to let this thing cool off. And then you're going to clean up your mess. There you go. So, first try, well, it had worked on the first try. This is the second try, and since I uh, tightened everything up right good, and got rid of the oiler. It's working awesome. So uh, I'm going to do another video after I make some changes and uh, make it a little more uh, uh, professional. And then we'll probably do the next one on the fire outside. So till next time, you can always catch it online at www.tngun.com. Oh